Should you back Elden Ring, the board game? It really pains me to say this, but no. But before I tell you why, my name is Sam, this is Should You Back It, and I'm here to help you crowdfund with confidence. Elden Ring, the board game, is a cooperative exploration game of strategic combat set in the world of the incredibly popular video game of the same title. You'll build a map and explore Limgrave, gathering resources, engaging with NPCs, and discover locations with a narrative that will unfold as you play. It's a game for one to four players, and each session will take a minimum of 120 minutes to complete. The game uses quite an interesting, diceless, card-driven combat system where you'll manage your stamina and learn the attack patterns of the AI in the game. And while stamina and AI attack patterns may seem like familiar tropes that we'd find in the video game, this is not just a tabletop port with some minor adjustments like we've seen with other recent video game board game tie-ins like Slay the Spire. But before we delve deeper into how the game plays, let's do a risk assessment on the company. Whenever we back something on Kickstarter or any crowdfunding platform for that matter, it's always important to do some research on the company themselves. See how their past projects went, see how they handled everything, and just get an idea and a sense of what our experience could be as a backer. Elden Ring the board game is being made by Steamforged Games, who have quite an extensive history on Kickstarter. This is their 15th campaign, and I'm actually a backer of one of their previous campaigns as I backed Horizon Zero Dawn. I didn't have a good experience at all. And for a long time, Steamforged's crowdfunding campaigns were pretty much on a blacklist for me of companies I would never give money to ever again. They delivered incredibly late, there were issues in communication, and other backers equally had issues with missing exclusives. They have since produced a number of campaigns that on the whole seem to have gone down well, but not without issues either. Bardsung has numerous backers complaining about errata, the Monster Hunter Kickstarter is delayed, and I've seen backers for a number of their games say that they straight up never received their pledge, although I think a good portion of these people just didn't complete their pledge manager or moved address without telling Steamforged, which is kind of on them. On the whole though, I would wholeheartedly recognize that Steamforged have greatly improved as a company since I backed one of their games. With that in mind, I'd give you an amber warning when it comes to this risk assessment. I think you're highly likely to have a positive experience backing this game. I believe that you will get your game, even if it is slightly and likely delayed. But the fact that Steamforged have six projects currently kickstarted and either in production or fulfillment, not including Elden Ring, is something that concerns me. So let's talk about gameplay. If you've watched my videos, you'll know that I don't really get into the nitty gritty details of the gameplay, but instead give a bit of an overview. Instead, if you wanna see an in-depth video on gameplay, I'd actually encourage you to solely watch the official gameplay video from Steamforged, which I'll link in the top right of this video. It's the most cohesive gameplay video I've found, and it's the best one to watch to understand what the heck is going on on the tabletop, because there's a lot to follow. If you're brand new to board games and you've come across this campaign because you're a fan of the video game, I would strongly recommend you check out some gameplay because this is an incredibly heavy game in my opinion. Your time will be spent exploring the game map, which spawns and grows by overturning some hex tiles on the tabletop. Each one has different icons that may unlock areas to enter into combat. They could unlock map fragments or resources. And when not exploring, you'll be in combat, which interestingly enough is done on ring binders, which have different combat arena layouts, depending on which enemy you're fighting. Each enemy fights in a different way, and you'll play cards to either attack or defend. Now, the combat system is really quite interesting, and if it seems like it would become pretty repetitive, I believe that's exactly the point. Similar to the video game, each time you face a specific type of enemy, it will always attack and behave in the exact same way, perfectly replicating the AI behavior patterns that we'd see in the game, where we get to learn how an enemy behaves in order to more efficiently and effectively defeat it as we progress through the game. One other thing I like about this combat system in the game is that since this is an open world tabletop game, if I was playing with friends and I enter combat while my friends are exploring, play continues as normal. They don't have to wait for my combat to be done in order for them to continue taking their actions, which just helps keep the flow of gameplay going. I think it's a great idea. 
This is important because each time you'll play, in essence, you'll be attempting to complete a quest, along the way having to complete a number of other smaller side quests, so it's important to help keep that flow continually moving. Additionally, as you play, you're going to be on a timer. You can't just take all the time in the world to complete a quest. Each player has three actions they can do in their turn, and if you don't do something that progresses you and your fellow players towards completing an objective, you're going to lose one of the timer markers. Run out, and it's game over. So the game very smartly gives you scope to explore, but on a long leash that will eventually leave you running out of rope. But here's the thing, there's a lot of clunk to this game and it kind of reminds me of the scale of game we'd get from a company like Awakened Realms. We've got an open world exploration system with tiles that will slowly take up your tabletop. Each player has a ring binder in order to carry out combat on. There are multiple stacks of cards that are needed to play the game, tokens, character boards, character customization, item crafting, deck building. This game just feels quite bloated with features and I can't help but wonder whether players will just feel overwhelmed and it makes me struggle to figure out what stage of board gamer this game is for. With video game tie-ins, my assumption is that these games are meant to be a way to help people who play video games find a pathway into the board gaming space, but with the amount of features this game has, it feels like the learning curve would just be incredibly steep. Even as someone who plays some pretty heavy games, it felt like I was trapped in a DJ Khaled song when watching the gameplay as I was introduced to another gameplay mechanic, and another, another one, one, and another one. Another one. But at the same time, this is a game that looks stunning. The components look amazing, and the miniatures are a massive draw. I'm a big miniatures fan and have backed games before quite stupidly just because the minis looked awesome. One of the things that I think Steamforged has gotten right is the fact they've got an entry-level pledge. Not sure if this is the game for you and you don't want to fork out $179 or £152 for the core pledge? Well, you can pick up an entry-level pledge which has one 20-hour campaign, 20 minis, it'll cost you $89 or £75. For me, this is a core pledge by any other name really, and if you're curious about the game and the idea of not backing it makes you wake up in a cold sweat over the course of this campaign, then that's the pledge I'd recommend you go for. Not the eye-watering £364 all-in pledge, even though there's a little voice in the back of my head that's just telling me to back that pledge. This is a game that I've been incredibly excited for since Steamforged announced it was coming to Kickstarter. I really wanted to be able to say that this is a game you should back, and if heavy games don't put you off, if you've watched the full gameplay video and you still feel positive about it, then yes, go for it, back this game. If you're a die-hard Elden Ring fan and you just need this in order to add to your collection of Elden Ring merch, or if you're curious about this game, you think you'll like it but you don't want to spend £152, then check out the entry-level pledge. But it really pains me to say that this is a game I don't believe I'll be backing, and I don't think I can recommend you to either. But just know that I am still incredibly torn on this. I may end up backing the entry-level pledge before the campaign ends, but at the moment, this is my recommendation. Hopefully you feel a bit more informed. If you found it helpful, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button. I'm a new channel and your support really does help.